What's up everyone? I've got a new blend to store with you guys. We're going to be recreating this really simple wireframe animation. Uh, it shouldn't take you guys too long, only about 5-10 minutes. Uh, it's really simple techniques and it looks really awesome. then so open up blender we're gonna hit a then hit x and just delete everything we're gonna start with a fresh scene now hit shift a add a new mesh and we're gonna add a plane and we're gonna scale it up to eight so hit s and then eight now come into edit mode so you hit tab that takes you into edit mode and we're gonna come up here to edge and we're gonna select subdivide now come to this menu down here on the bottom left open that up and we're gonna change the number of cuts to 30 now come out of edit mode, so hit tab, come to your modifier section here, we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add a wireframe modifier and you're going to get this cool grid pattern here. Now we're going to drop the thickness down to about 0 0.004, now hit shift A, add a camera and hit alt R so it resets the rotation, now hit RX 90 so that rotates it 90 degrees, now hit G y and then minus eight and as you can see if we come into top view the camera starts exactly where the plane starts and this is crucial if you want this to loop seamlessly now i'm just going to do a really quick camera animation so pull up your timeline and i'm essentially going to animate this camera along the y-axis so if you click on your camera just come to your transform settings and we set it to minus 8 as a start point. We're going to come to our timeline, change the end to 120 so we can make a 5 second loop. Uh, make sure you're at the first frame, actually make sure you're at frame 0. This is important as we're going to add motion blur, so make sure you start at frame 0. The reason we do this is basically if you start at frame 1, if you have motion blur enabled you're going to get a sort of glitch in the first frame, which we don't want. So uh, yeah, come to frame 0, apply a keyframe, come to frame 120, and we're going to put that to 8 on the y-axis and the reason we put it to 8 is because it ends precisely where the plane ends now if you apply keyframe on 120 now hit A and then T in your timeline and change it to linear just to make sure that the animation runs constantly rather than smoothing out the keyframes now if you hit 0 that toggles camera view uh, we're just going to hit G and then Z and just bring it up a bit, we'll say about here for now. I might move it later because we're going to start displacing this. Click on your plane, come back to your modifier section. We're going to add a displace modifier, so add add displace. And you're going to get this really weird shape. And the hierarchy is important, so make sure your displace modifier is at the top. Uh, this one with the little triangles, just click on this arrow here. Make sure that's at the top. Um, we want to add a texture on the displace, come to your texture settings here, change the type to clouds and we're going to pump the size up and bring the depth all the way down. Alright so now we're going to um, we're going to make some movement on the displacement and the way we do that is hit shift A, add an empty and we're going to add an empty cube and we're going to use this empty to essentially animate the displacement of the, um, of the texture you want to select your empty and to make it loop seamlessly we're going to animate the rotation come to frame 0 on your rotation apply keyframe on the z axis I'll come to frame 120 and we're going to change that to 360 degrees on the z and you're going to see the cube just spins um, also we want to change this to linear as well so a t linear But the displacement of the plane is not moving yet, so we're going to use, we're going to basically link the two together. So if you come to your plane, come to your modifier section on your displace, on texture coordinate, select object, on object, select empty. And now you get this really cool sort of pattern here. And we can scale the empty to tame it a bit. 
but we can also come to the plane and just drop the strength a bit as it's uh, it's coming in a bit strong. So we'll say about 0.2 and maybe bring the empty down a bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. Cool. Actually, you can see it's kind of uh, clipping into the camera. So I'm just going to bring the camera up a bit. GZ. And I'm going to pull the shift down. So come to your camera settings here. I'm going to put the shift down on the Y axis. So it's kind of facing down a bit. And just bring it up a tiny bit more. GZ. Cool. And obviously it doesn't loop seamlessly just yet. Because obviously it comes to an end here. So here's how we're going to make it loop. We're going to add a mirror modifier. So, so come to your modifiers, add a modifier, add a mirror modifier. We're going to mirror it along a particular point. So if you hit Shift A, add another empty, and we're going to add a plane axis. Hit G Y eight. You can see that's come right to the end. We're going to name that mirror empty Y. Now come to your back to your plane. On mirror object, select the empty you just created and uncheck X and check Y. And now when you hit play, you see it's mirrored it from that point. Now as you can see, it's still not looping seamlessly. So we want to essentially duplicate this along the Y axis. But instead of duplicating, we're going to actually create instances. This uh, this just helps our computer a bit. It's, um, it's sort of creating copies of it rather than actual mesh data. So the way we do that is click on your plane. You're going to hit M, new collection, and we're going to call it whatever you want. Call it wires. Now hit Shift A, add a collection instance, add wires, and you want to hit G Y 32. And rather than duplicating this plane, we're going to duplicate the instance. And it's just going to make our computer a bit more happier in dealing with this. So, yeah. So, Shift D, Y, 32. And just keep doing that until it fills up the whole camera. I'll say about there. Now, I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, it's still not looping seamlessly. It's There's still... A bit of a glitch and that's because I made a mistake earlier because we've um, added that mirror we've actually extended the length of the plane originally I was only having the camera come up to this point here we need to animate it so the camera comes all the way up to this point so instead of come to frame 120 and on your camera on your glow on your location settings instead of 8 you want it to end at 24 so it just doubles the length, just make sure that's uh, linear. So now when we hit play, this should loop seamlessly. Cool, perfect loop. Now one last thing with this, I want the wireframe to fill out the whole camera width. So I'm going to add another mirror modifier. And here's the coolest thing about when you instance things rather than duplicating them. All you have to do is make adjustments to this object and it will do it for the whole instance. So we're going to add a mirror modifier on the X axis now. So if you hit Shift A, add another empty. We're going to add another plane axis. I'll hit G, X, 8. And we're going to name this mirror empty X. If you click on your plane now, we're going to add another mirror modifier. Just basically do exactly what you did on this, but anything you did with Y, do it with X. So we're going to keep that as X, and we're going to mirror object, mirror empty X. And now it's made the whole thing wider. Now the only thing left to do here is click on your plane and your two mirror empties and hit G, X, minus 8. This puts everything in the center for us. Hit play. And that's what you get. And there's still some settings you can play around with. So I'm going to play around with the focal length on the camera. 
and the position of it as well. I'm going to bring it that a bit, I think. Yeah, just play around with your camera settings till you get something you like. I'm going to drop the strength down a tiny bit more, just a touch more on the displacement. Now we're going to start shading the object. We're just going to do some really simple emission shading on this. So hit Z and then 8, and that will take you into rendered mode. We're going to make the world black. So come to your world settings here, make it black. Click on your plane. We're going to come to our material settings on plane, add new, and we're going to change this to an emission shader. We're going to pump the strength up to 8, and I'm going to make it a nice sort of pink. Now we're going to come to our scene settings. We're doing this in Eevee. I'm going to add ambient inclusion, bloom, but I'm going to bring the intensity down because it's very strong. Put that here. Motion blur, and on color management, I'm going to make it very high contrast and bring the gamma down 0.7. I might just bring the emission strength down on the wireframe as well. And I think I'm going to bring the bloom down just a touch. Cool, and that pretty much that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap it up there. So the only thing left to do is to render out the animation. So if you click on your output properties, change the output to somewhere you can find it, change your file format to FFmpeg video, encoding, we'll put that as MP4, leave the video codec as H.264, and output quality, exceptionally lossless. And then you just want to come up to render and render animation. And that's it, you're done. Right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you do feel like you gained any value from this lesson, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And don't forget to tag me in your final render. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. So if you make this, or a variation of it, just tag at Nedmotion on Instagram, add it to your story, I'll repost it, share the love. I'll also be dropping a link down in the description if you want to play around with a tutorial file or you just want to grab a copy of the render, there'll be a link to my website, that's nevmotion.co.uk.